are about to get interesting. Can you talk to family members? We could do a seance. I'm honestly not a big fan of this kind of thing. Spirit, oh spirit, who are here to see family and friends. Anyone else a daddy? It's you. Shh. Your father, was he a bad man? You could say that. He tried to kill my mom and me. One night when he was strangling her, I shot him with his own gun. She's been in a mental institution ever since. <laughs> What was that? Something pushed through. Like a spirit? What was that? This didn't just happen to Richie. This happened to all of us. <laughs> You're all gonna die. Whatever it was, it was stronger than anything I've ever felt before. He is him. Who is he? I think I know who it is. Trust me when I say this. His soul is up for grabs. His name is... Oh, my God! Hi, come on. You all right? Look like you've seen a ghost. children and there are things about pregnancy that I didn't know. You are not allowed to leave me ever. Are you a fan of Logan French? He's heard your work and he wants to meet you. Logan French is one of the hottest new teen pop stars of the year. So you've come to recruit me to the dark side. <laughs> Selling out? No, I genuinely want to see you succeed. I'm here to see Adam Saul. Oh, he's my uncle. The kings have sold their half of the building to my brother and I. We have a contract for another three years. You might want to check clause 13F of your contract there. You either pay up or you get out. They have to raise $30,000 or they are out on the streets. We have so much talent here. We can put together a show and broadcast it live. I have a huge favor to ask. Okay. I think we're all in. We're crazy. <laughs> Just because they say it's not real doesn't mean it's not true. Committing fraud, putting these poor kids out on the street. So I forget who the brains of this operation is, brother. My connections run very deep. You're not at all what I expected. Not at all what I expected. Either. Thank you.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with Nuclear Popcorn, and today I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. Yes, we've been stranded uh, because of the pandemic, but we're doing some good things, and I finally got my uh, pilot actress back. She was on our very first uh, show, uh, award-winning actress, voiceover artist, and uh, media person. She has a whole lot of different hats she wears. Her name's Vita Gafari. Hello, Vita. Hi, Maurice. It's such an honor to be on your show. You do so much for our community. And also just want to give you a big shout out because not only are you a great journalist and artist, but you're a vet. And, you know, I tip my hat to you. And, you know, thank you so much for your service. And also big thanks to Pasadena Media and humongous thanks to our amazing guests, Harley and Katie Wallen. So honored to have you on the show. Such an honor. Definitely. How are you? Okay. And Vita's a hope the co-host this 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 day because Vita has that great brain and sometimes hard to pick up with it. She's always firing off on our soldiers. And we got so much to talk about. We need someone with that kind of mental dexterity. So just want to thank you, Harley, and your beautiful wife, Katie. And we're gonna jump right in it. And I'm gonna kind of be like the side study today. I'm gonna let Vita take the reins. And then oh when I goodness. see opening, when I see openings in our bus set, but Vita, take it over. Great. Well, uh, it's such an honor today to have the lovely couple, Harley and Katie Wallen, that's such accomplished actors, filmmakers, directors, producers, uh, just a very intriguing and talented uh, young couple on the rise. And it's been an honor to work with them. And I look forward to working with them again. And uh, a big, warm, nuclear popcorn welcome to uh, Harley and Katie Wallen. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, doesn't worry, go because it's nuclear. Popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. It's uh, it's uh, good to be on, and and uh, thank you, Maurice and, and Vita, for uh, for having us on. Our pleasure, definitely our pleasure. I've uh, haven't known you long, and I still don't know you. But the more I see of you, I see there's a kind of like a person who's just exploding in all different directions. And you seem so calm about it. And I uh, just want to thank you for coming and bringing your, your uh, just incredible proliferation of events and um, different projects with you. A lot of them are so excited too. So, um, earlier we were talking, talking, talking about, talking about which, which, which you can get into first. We touched on the, Donny Hathaway story, and we touched on other things that are going on. So I'm not sure which one you place more more love into. Uh, tell us what what right now has just got you by the throat, and you're just kind of like a, an addict to it. It's something that's taken over your whole life, and you just got to keep doing it. The more you do it, but what what's just burning in your heart right now? Well, right now the we are at the, towing the finish line of uh, Tale of Tales which is a TV series. We have eight episodes. Uh, my uh, sound editing team is saying Tuesday I will have the final episode. Uh, my sales agent is really cool because I, uh, we've been, we've been, you know, we had a first episode and, and second episode. We combined the first and second episodes for our festival run. And uh, I didn't really know what to expect because it is edgy and it has takes place at a strip club and, and so on and so forth. So I wasn't sure how it was going to be received, uh, especially because in the first couple of episodes, you probably see the most of the strip club. So I didn't know if that was going to be uh, something that would put off a uh, uh, part of the audience or if they were going to be on board with us. Uh, you know, you, if you watch, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, Game of Thrones, there's an awful lot of sex in the beginning and a lot of nudity, and then it settles down because you don't have to see it all after that because you get the picture now. And we kind of had the same thing. We had to kind of, we kind of had to drag you to the dirt in the strip club a little bit for the first couple of episodes. So I didn't have very high expectations. We sent this thing out to film festivals, and it blew our mind. We were 14 out of 15 at one point, uh, uh, which the rest of our films if they do 50% acceptance rate, we're happy. Mm -hmm. uh, and here wow. we have something that got into 14 out of 15 possible festivals. Mm -hmm. And then we won at virtually every single one. It kind of blew my wow. mind. Wow. 
So it's kind and of you're like shooting you're during a pandemic too, right? So that's like yeah, a whole yeah. different ball game. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. But for people sure. are definitely taking a liking to it. That mm-hmm. that's obvious. We did a couple of test screenings here as well. Uh, my executive producing team wanted to do little screenings at their house. They have a little screening area. So they brought about 20 people over, didn't over, you know, explain things a whole lot. And, uh, and the, uh, we did the first one, we showed the first two episodes and they were loving it. So then we do it again and we show them episodes three, four, and five. And this time around, not only did they love it, but they were not happy with me that they couldn't watch the rest. They were really like, so when are we going to see the rest? When are we going to? And I was like, wow, like we legitimately have an audience that's captive. And then I sent it to my sales agent um, and and they saw the pilot and I thought we would be done there and they would, you know, probably not watch the rest. And they are asking, well, how many more episodes do you have? And I'm like, well, the, so far we have five in the can, the rest coming. And they were like, we want to see it now. It's really good. <laughs> so it's been a wild ride. And I think the whole team, we could feel it every now and then when you're on a project, you just feel that there's something special going on. This was not one of those experiences where everybody just upped their game, just an extra 10, 15%, just because of how you know important this felt to everybody. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So did you get a chance to utilize your martial arts training in this movie? Good question. Um, not, not a lot for me, but we have a, a guest star that used to train with me, and I've, I've been his uh, punching dummy. Darren Crookshank from the UFC and The Ultimate Fighter has mm-hmm. a really cool uh, small guest starring role, uh-huh. and uh, this is his first time not being on Ultimate Fighter or TMZ or whatnot. Uh, so this... This was a lot of fun for, for us and him. So he got to do a lot of fun. I got to do some, but uh, not to his degree. Let's put it that way. Okay. Could you could you give us a little, like, a synopsis of it? Or is, would that be taken too much out of it? No, not at all. I think the, the main story takes place. I play Nick. Uh, Nick is the guy running this, uh, you know. Borderline strip club. Strip club that... that <laughs> Where they do sexual favors, favors. It's Whoa. it's not a it's not a upscale strip club. Mm-hmm. It's it's the suburb or the side joint mm-hmm. uh, where you know we we see these things things takes place, drug deals, sex, uh, uh, and illegal activities, so to speak. And uh, uh, Nick is at the end of his ropes where he's been kind of paying his dues his whole life in his own mind that he wants to now get enough money buy himself a little island and get away from it all. But because he's close to the end, he's also willing to kind of do whatever it takes to get there, which also places him in trouble. So on the very first episode, it ends with um, a stripper ODing and Mm. dying in the club. And they, and they now are forced to deal with that Uh, little known fact is that it's not actually Nick's club which also complicates things but yeah so a lot of things happen and okay, here's so anyway. the here's the police officer um, that is also sisters with the dead stripper who comes oh, looking God. with a big personal agenda um, to make things again even more complicated um, also whilst a motorcycle gang with a clubhouse not too far away is also trying to buy the club because it's by their clubhouse, which all of these things, com- you know, compiling on top of each other makes for a lot of craziness. Yeah. So would you say having things so tumultuous is a is a great foundation to uh, having a great film? Well, with with this one, it's kind of unique because I, I tend to overextend myself when I write personally and have a lot of characters and a lot of things happen. And we are in an age now where people don't have an attention span and rarely can stay off their phone for a film. And I've had people that watched, you know, my movie Eternal Code and, and, and the people that can put their phone away and watch it, they're like, wow, great plot, awesome story. The people that don't have the attention span will go like, that was too many characters.
couldn't, couldn't keep track of them. And, you know, so, so good and bad, I guess. But in a TV series, you can actually do that and mm -hmm. follow not just one person or two people. Uh, you can have this ensemble, which mm -hmm. I really enjoy. What kind of music are we are we gonna hear in this? It sounds oh. like this is one of those movies where it's gonna be street, fierce, cred, uh, serious, yeah. kind of dark, kind of uh, you know, on those real. Edgy. I'm in the movies that are kind of dark, dark by nature, but dark and shadowy. Is that yeah. the kind of movie this is too? It is. It is. Uh, uh, we have uh, anybody who knows about ICP uh, knows about Twisted. Uh, we uh, we just announced it a couple of days ago that Twisted has got a couple of his biggest songs in our TV series. And uh, we are really lucky with uh, 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 our composers. They are, uh, they're a team that's also a record label, and they did music for Triple X. They did music for Too Fast, Too Furious, wow. and a bunch of other things. Yeah. Uh, and they have fantastic artists. So when you're watching the series... <laughs> Uh, it's all music that you feel like you've heard before. You mm -hmm. you you could swear you just heard it on the radio, and I love that because it gives you um, a studio feel um, without necessarily. And you and anybody in the industry knows getting the you know the songs that you were hoping to have uh, cost an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. So for an indie filmmaker, that's uh, often a stretch. Very cool. Uh, what else is on your play? I know it's a play that's. Full. I, I wouldn't even because when you guys started talking, I was like, oh, I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that one. Give us, uh, kick us some more uh, tidbits that have either won awards or about to win awards. So um, tell us something else on your plate that's really hot off the press as well. For one, actually, tell me more about Eternal Code because I saw something where a co host gets real naughty and evil and uh, <laughs> blows. <laughs> Tell us about uh, Eternal Code, something that, that we don't know. Well, that, one of my favorite experiences with Eternal Code was to get all of these performances from such an ensemble cast uh, and to play characters that are not, you know, your normal cup of tea. You, uh, and it was really cool, too, because uh, not knowing Vita mm -hmm. has a father who's a, 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 a scientist, scientist the, to the degree that he that he was, and for her to come in and play this uh, high end scientist, the the premise of the the film Eternal Code is essentially the what we're actually nearing to do for real uh, is yes. to be able to uh, essentially live forever in one shape or another. And in this film, we essentially figured out that you could download the essence of a person onto a, a specific drive, then insert that drive into another person and then hijack the system and, and take them over. Uh, so that's essentially what happens. So every time you get old and starts kind of like, uh, you know, you have this old body that doesn't want to agree and do what you want to do, you can just transfer into a, a new young one. The premise of this film is... Um, you know, the riches of the rich aren't interested in waiting or finding a, a brain dead person that they can take over. They're taking humans, uh, just like with the organ, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the dirty market with organs, they're taking yeah. full bodies um, mm. and essentially hijacking them. So they're out there looking at people almost like they're shopping. And I and thought that was an intriguing for, Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Harley, I think you, the one most interesting thing of all of this is that you're almost like giving us a socioeconomic breakdown of it. It touches upon the 1%. It touches upon the have and have nots. Katie's mm -hmm. character, which she played so well, was definitely in the film a have not. It's like the class distinctions, which in these times, I mean, you're ahead yeah. of your time if you think of it, was so compelling to me. What drew you to talk about that component? Because usually these movies are like, okay, we're going to take this power out of this brain and put it into that brain. I think it's so interesting that it's like a sociologist's kind of dream, the way you kind of unravel the different pieces of it. I'm not well, just saying it because I was in your movie and you guys are awesome people and, and great filmmakers. It's just as a person. 
But I definitely know that I, I love moral dilemmas uh, in real life and on screen. So anytime that you can take something that matters outside of the film and place it in the film, and, and when you place it in a film, uh, you know, who, who right now you, you're looking at the, what is it, a, a, a veteran commits suicide every whatever. It's insanity to hear that. They go pay their dues and then they don't survive. So I wanted to make a suicidal veteran a hero. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. And then I thought to myself, who could his unlikely partner be? And I said, you know what? How about a prostitute? So, so that's kind of where we started. We started with the two least likely heroes because we tend to judge. And then yeah. we proved everybody wrong because you judged somebody that you shouldn't have. And that, that to me is important. And if you look at any of my films, you're going to find there's always that the moral dilemma of just because you can doesn't mean you should. And, 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 and maybe showing right and wrong in a different way that makes you as an audience go, huh? I like doing that to people. I like making people go, huh? <laughs> Yeah, you definitely do. You definitely do. And uh, it was such a such a great experience and such an honor for me to work with with both of you guys. And I also feel like it's also your background. You know, you're of Swedish descent. Um, I know Katie has a little bit of Nordic heritage as well, too. So it's, you almost have like a European uh, take on things, don't you think? Yeah, I think uh, for me, I think I'm fairly well traveled. Uh, so yeah. I've seen, I've seen, uh, I mean, I've seen the hunger in the streets of Sudan. I've seen mm -hmm. Yugoslavia when it was still beautiful. I've seen Russia when it was dark. I've been to East Germany for a judo tournament. It was scary. So just wow. being, seeing all these things has made a lot of impressions on me that I think I can then uh, get out of me when I, when I write and direct uh, to show layers and, and stories that maybe we're, we don't see every everywhere. Yeah, definitely. It's like a world citizen kind of POV as opposed to the, you know, typical, typical. That's what at least I experienced. Yes. But uh, going back to Tale of Tales, could you tell sure. us a little bit of, about the cast? Is there what you can, is there much else you can, uh, you know, let us know about? Did you want to talk about the cast? <laughs> talk about the cast. Well, most as far as the, um, like what we call Hollywood talent goes, we had Blanca Blanca, Blanca Blanco, which we had her come in for Betrayed, um, which was a fun experience, but it was awesome seeing her again because, I mean, when you deal with characters like hers, which she plays one of the, the strippers um, in the first season here, um, it's, it's nice to see how she takes things with the layers and and where she brings the characters um she did so good she, she did really, so good. really good she did so good yeah. she has it's we had actually quite a few scenes together yeah. and we have so many art in our scenes that are just like oh my gosh like we really yeah. you can tell when people are excited about their character and they really put the work in and they let it go and they just bring it and it's refreshing they have they have a scene where it's her a detective and blanca and it's a very mouthy quick uh witted dialogue and it was it, it had me nervous about shooting it because of the complexities mm -hmm. and when you have people in town for this much time and right. we have to get everything done in that time it always makes you nervous and i was just like so excited about how well they did and uh, I agree, the character's phenomenal. Uh, we already touched on Jan. Jan as Francisco mm -hmm. is the best I've ever seen him. I mean, I oh, yeah. love Same Jan here. in this. Mm -hmm. He is seriously gold. Uh, and, and I bet you uh, he's not just a horror actor anymore after this. Because uh, wow. he's really, he's very interesting and intriguing. Comedic, actually. Yeah. He's oh, comedic. Wow. Yeah. Which is, but he, he did so great. I love Jan and his yeah. character. Yeah. He did so good. It's awesome. He really brought it. Like, it's funny because there was a situation that he, 
brought to Harley right before they started shooting, like 10 minutes before they started shooting, he decided he wanted a handlebar mustache, okay? It's like, wow. Harley, what do you think? <laughs> I know. Yeah. And he's like, you know what? Go for it. If you, if you feel it, go so for happy. it. Too. The best. It, it was, it was awesome. awesome. It was so yeah. awesome. Yeah. And just how he brought the character in, it was great. Yeah, Richard <laughs> Tyson um, has a very unique role mm-hmm. in this. And he's, his, uh, he's a part of a flashback sequence that essentially gives you the childhood and the and uh, of my character. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, and when you watch him, he's in a scene. So it's him and it's Michael Emery from Blue Bloods and Jesse yeah. Jensen. So mm-hmm. it's like a trio of really, really good actors. Interesting I, characters. Oh, my God. All I, of them are such interesting characters that, like... It, the choices are so exaggerated, but they're so true to who they are. It's exciting to watch. Yeah, it is. I almost took out their sequence of 10 or 11 minutes and made a short film out of it just to get it to festivals because it's wow. so compelling. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, he's. I was honored to work with him in your film, and I am yeah. sure he's outstanding in this. And it sounds like it's like a period flashback, like it's probably from like what the seventies or eighties or something. Seventies. Yeah, seventies. That's awesome! Wow, this is so. This is not at all what I assumed this tale of tales to be. It's definitely you know multi layered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, there was like references earlier to Breaking Bad, Shameless. Yeah. It sounds like quite the ensemble piece. So yeah, it is. It sounds it sounds incredible. Wow. So yeah. that's and I guess we won't know when that'll be done for us to watch. As I watch my ice cream, eat my ice cream with the scantily clad women, and curse myself for eating ice cream. <laughs> they but are I, it like there was much more to that than the scantily clad women. So. Yeah, they're talking April. So this is Not that two months away. away from being out. It is absolutely wow. insane. The the sales agent we got said, you know, what we're going to do is essentially we're going to put it out and, and, and force them to stop us. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, we're going to get this Amazon to be IMDb TV Roku, uh, 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 you know, and, and get this voodoo everywhere. And then we're going to say, if you want this exclusive, I can stop it from going out here, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to stop us from putting it out because he's I like, like I, I do too. And, and time is really a valuable component mm-hmm. because this series uh, right now, there's a bit of a shortage. I don't know uh, about you, but you know, we, we watch more TV than normal because you're out less, you do less. So, so exactly. we've watched more shows than normal. So right now there's a shortage of stuff. We're always looking for something. Content that that draws us in that will we will enjoy and be able to um, have a good time, but not feel like we have to commit too much. Yeah. Which is nice That's because true. it's thirty minute episodes. You 20, know, 20, 20, 25 minute episodes. Yeah. Yeah. The episodes are twenty to twenty five minutes. Uh, we originally said, you know, with all these shows now aiming at 45 to mm-hmm. 60 minutes um you know back in the day and when you're looking at Shit's creek when you're looking at the uh, uh, cobra kai they're all 20 30 minute shows because yeah. uh, they know that you're how often can you sit down like and watch something and you know you i we get kids we have uh, six and seven year olds so what yeah. happens is we get in the couch at the end of the day and we're like all right you got an hour in us so you know, you don't watch it maybe a movie because it's going to be too late before right. you go to bed and you got to get the kids up to school. So you end up saying a series and half of these series now, they're forcing you to watch a whole hour almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I'm like, you don't always have that. And I thought to myself, with 20 to 25 minute episodes, you can, you can watch an episode on lunch break. Yeah. You can watch it here and there. Uh, and you can binge if you want to as well. Uh, you, uh, you know, you can clear the whole season in a night or two. That's so it gives you a lot of options as a viewer. Wow. I re- I saw in one of your posts that your daughters made their debut recently in one of your projects. Am I right? Well, uh, Amelia, the youngest one, is her first. 
uh, Hannah, the uh, seven-year-old, soon to be eight, she was in the original Bennett Song movie. She played the daughter of the Tara Reid. Um, oh, nice! That's right. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, but, so, uh, but they have multiple scenes in this. They're flashback scenes of young uh, Allison. Oh, that's lovely. The yeah. Allison and the sister, the troubled yeah. sister. Yeah. Amber is the yeah. one. Amber is the one. The stripper who dies, and right. then. Uh, so and then this, but they're the young two of them um, is played by our, our true life daughters, and they were really excited. And now they can't wait to, to do more. They're mm-hmm. always asking when they're going to get new lines. <laughs> I love it. That's wonderful. That's fabulous. Yeah. That's great. I'm really curious to see this now. It's not at all what I anticipated, and I should know that coming from you guys. So yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely uh, it's got it's got m- way more depth than way more layers. Uh, and I said this earlier. I don't think we were even on the air, but we made a commitment when we started this because it does touch on strip clubs, and it is not necessarily the best place for everyone. So we didn't want to just glorify that portion of it. Mm-hmm. So we have a commitment for every season. We will have one stripper that works their way to eventually leave and mm-hmm. and and uh, because they see that it's not good for them and good for their life so so that's the plan that we keep uh in the back of our head to make sure that we honor that uh, so that we have that component in there to make sure that it does because i i've seen shows that i don't think they meant to glorify violence or or, or sex or whatever it may be uh, but by accident they did uh, right. Or and maybe maybe they meant it, but uh, we want to make sure that we're very focused on uh, on uh, on showing both sides of this, both the fun, you know, guys go out and hang out, or whatever, but also the bad things that happen in there. And um, Tevis, the original creator of this idea, he's worked in a strip club for like twenty or thirty years, whatever. So all these crazy stories, many of them are have at least their their origin in truth and, and real things uh and then they became dramatized and added to this mm-hmm. but uh, uh a lot of these stories come from a place where names <laughs> have been changed to protect the not so innocent uh, uh so a lot of fun wow that's impressive let me ask a quick question that we've never asked before when you were in your i say teen years and probably more interested in you know bodybuilding karate that type of thing what was it that pulled you into making movies or were you always making movies or was there someone in your family that just enthused you with a with a burning desire and got you out of the athletic mode for me i've always liked being busy and i've always liked uh expressing myself in art in some form so I've had a couple of songs as a singer and rapper uh, at the Cannes Music Festival. I have, uh, I was a break dancer. I was a Scandinavia champion break dancer. Uh, and uh, so I've, I've done a lot of stuff in my life. I ended up on a, on a cult TV show in Sweden. And uh, it's like a cabaret Osmonds type of, uh, Osmonds meets Saturday Night Live almost Mm -hmm. show and uh i was supposed to be a dancer because we had a lot of musical guests that came in uh we had kylie minogue we had uh samantha fox and all kinds of 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 guest stars and uh when they did sets changes and when they performed they had us dance but they also asked us when they had one-liners and stuff if we would do that instead of bringing in a separate actor and so so i started hanging out with the actors and I, I had no idea. I thought acting was just pretending to be somebody else. Uh, and uh, and I start hanging out with them, and I start listening to how they're talking. I'm like, oh, this is not at all what I thought. Uh, so I started listening to them. I got intrigued. I got an acting coach, started taking classes. So that was kind of how it worked for me. Uh, she has a different journey. Kind of started with her sister. Uh, that's a little different. 
Yeah. So for me, it was my sister. She was actually going to school out in LA. Uh, she was coming back for her thesis project. She was going to make it over the summer. It was for graduating. And um, at the time, I mean, you know, you're a college student, you don't have money. So who do you hire? You hire your family, right? So <laughs> I was the one that took on helping her move her equipment, helping her with, you know, being the one that sat at the table for signing people in at casting calls. I, you know, the backup uh, extra in the background holding the pumpkin, walking across, like just weird, you know, I was the go-to girl when they needed somebody there to look like they needed to do something, you know? Anyways, so though, I loved it. Uh, she did a short afterwards that was me singing and walking around and doing all these things that I got to see both sides, you know? Cause I, I, like I saw the casting stuff. I saw all the actors coming in and watching them in their auditions. I was just fascinated. I thought it was the coolest thing, but I never thought it was going to be my career and what I was going to do. Well, then her sister moved <laughs> to L.A. Mm-hmm. and continued. She's got, like, five Emmys now. She's yeah. just ridiculous. A shout-out to Kelly to Parker. Kelly. She is uh, in Mexico, right? Now she's in Mexico, Mexico working on right another now. project. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. But she, so when Kelly moved, she went into modeling. Mm-hmm. And then when we met... I kind of relit that flame. Yeah. And she found a new acting coach again okay. and started All getting right. real serious about it. Getting into this again. It was exciting though. And it's actually, we both, it's so funny. He has his own thing. I have my own thing, but we both find something together through this, like, especially with filmmaking and producing together uh, and him with directing and me as an actor. Like we talk about and these producers. Things. And she, producer. And she producer. She not some, I, I want to take my hat off with this. She was the nuts and bolts producer for uh, Tale of Tales. Eight wow. episodes, Tale of Tales, the, doing the brunt of the work, which, because when I take off my, I, I produce all the way up until right before production starts. Then I take my producer's hat off and I put creative hats on and I don't touch producer again. Uh, so, so it all fell on her and uh, it was, it was awesome. Like it was, it was really, really good experience. <laughs> Uh, it was a learning experience, a big learning experience. But yeah, no, um, but I love producing. Yeah. Much question. as I was angry, there was some times I was upset, but I love producing. I have a quick question: How did you meet Katie, and how did you meet Vita? <laughs> oh, I was gosh. bartending at a bar called the Emerald Ballroom in Mount Clemens, Michigan. <laughs> and there was this event that was going on, and it was called the Rock Runway, and. I actually it's a charity. Offered, uh, it's a modeling. charity modeling event, and I was actually offered to model in it, but I'd rather make money instead, so I completely mm-hmm. turned it down. But they had me work the VIP bar. The VIP bar was catering the act or the models that were uh, like going to and from on stage, and he was modeling in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if I said we met because one of us was modeling, you would not have picked out how that one worked out. Uh, but yeah, so I uh, so that's how we met. I kind of hung out at her bar most of the night, and then we I don't think we ever stopped talking. Yeah, after that, it was like we started hanging out, yeah. talking, being best friends. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. How how'd you meet Miss Kafari over here? Well, Vita, we met through our, we have the same uh, manager, mm-hmm. uh, Joe Williamson. And the, uh, Big shout out to Joe Yes. Williamson. Shout out to Joe. Joe, Joe is Amazing so Joe incredible. Williamson. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, I, I should touch on him too a little bit in a minute. But uh, essentially, he was, uh, before I even started working with him, he, uh, like a lot of managers do, they, they send me, acting reels and stuff of their of their actors and, and say, do you have anybody that you'd be interested in? And the thing with Vida is that she has such a, uh, there's not anybody else like her on screen. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's, uh, that's you. yeah, no, but, but you, you're, uh, one of the things that you're always looking for as a, as a producer director mm-hmm. is you're looking for interesting characters. Yep. And, uh, and, uh, you have a great screen presence. Yeah. So the oh, screen you presence. Know, the you know, I think I you thank you. Like yeah. I mean, she, I she has a tendency to, you have a tendency to, to draw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're on screen, it's not, it's, it's not easy to not look 
away. away you know you want to look at the screen so mm -hmm. so that was i mean i guess the very very first impression is just looking and seeing somebody that i knew had screen presence which to me you know i i go back and, and I, I cast my films a lot more like the olden days not about the, your Instagram following or blah, any of that <laughs> crap. In the, uh, sorry, yeah, but, I, but I, care, I care about what what goes on the screen, and and to me, uh, it's fit, it's truth, it's screen presence, uh, and and that's kind of where you find the the gold mine, especially as an indie filmmaker. If you can stay very true to that and find the people that fit the role mm -hmm. very very well. They can play it truthfully so that the audience believe that they are who they say they are. But then that that magical thing called screen presence, um, uh, the, you can't deny those things. So when you put all of those things on screen, it's hard to make people look away. And, mm -hmm. and that's what you got to figure out ways to do as an indie filmmaker. You got to keep the audience intrigued. <laughs> so you have to find intriguing people. I kind of, I've always thought that acting is more like a person whose spirit touches your, literally touches your spirit. Because yeah. a lot of times when I'm looking at films, I hate to say it, I'm looking for that name that I've seen of someone that that locked me down into a role a long time ago. And if I don't see that, then I get to play the movie about 10 minutes, then I'll yeah. move ahead like 30 minutes, like, oh, I gave you a chance. Next, mm -hmm. you know, and video yeah. kind of touches your soul right away. Oh, yeah. thank you guys. Thank you. It's it's a testament to working with amazing people like you guys. I mean, you're I don't know how Harley and Katie do all that they do and when they come to screen it's just magnetic. So I mean I tip my hat to you guys because you guys wear so many hats and I can't even imagine like, you know, all the things that you do and you guys even do the casting. So that's tremendous yeah. to me. All the things that you do. Astounding. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think the, the the thing that I think is different with us than a lot of people is um, I think we love the journey. We're not about the destination. The destination will figure itself out. We love the grind. We love making films. I don't need to have meetings about it. I don't need to, to, to do all those other things. I just love telling a great story through great people building a team and a community uh, that, that that's, if, if I can do that, I'm happy. Uh, you know, if we can reach a big audience, great. Uh, I, I love when we get, you know, you look at betrayed now, betrayed is in every continent except our folks uh, and, and, and eternal code. Uh, uh, we're waiting for the Australia deal, but we're pretty close to being there with eternal code as well. So th that's the thing is, uh, is, is just telling a great story with a bunch of great people. That That's the price in and of itself. What about Upstruce? Could that tell was it between the movie great. Betrayed and Upstruce? Yeah, Upstruce uh, was one of our very first films. Uh, and uh, it was kind of, it was a bit of a shocker because we had worked with very small budgets mm -hmm. and that was our first somewhat budget. I don't even want to tell you what it was. <laughs> Uh, but but essentially what ended up happening is I wrote the script myself. My friend uh, 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 and, and, and once upon a time co-director, uh, Jerry Hayes, who co-directed Moving Parts with me, who is also Katie's acting coach and uh, a good acting uh, feedback for me. He's a great friend. He is awesome. But, but he, so he, he read it and he goes, oh, man, it's a great script, but you have a big dilemma. Who's going to play Max? And I go, I don't know. And he goes, I can pretty much tell you that there are two people that I've seen as an anti-hero hold me on screen, and it's Mickey Rourke and Tom Sizemore. Mm. And I go, oh, never thought about that. That's a, yeah, that's a complicated role. So I don't know why. I, I, I was actually somewhat friendly with Mickey Rourke back in the day in Miami, so I tried to get a hold of him first. Um, and I, I couldn't uh, find a way to get a hold of him, but I got a hold of the person handling Sizemore's uh, uh, Facebook account, and they said, "I'm going to tell him about this. If he's interested, you know, you can send the script." 
he liked the idea of it. I sent him the script, uh, and uh, it was that and weekend. It was Literally. it was like that, and then I it, then we had to figure out that how do I explain to him we don't have really any money, uh, you know. This, so this became very complicated. But he was like so in love with the role and so in love with my fiery passion for what I'm doing that he was like, let's make this work. So uh, so he came in town and, and did this film, and he was, I mean, he was really really good. That film won so many awards it's just insane uh especially for that early in our career with you know like a shoestring budget Mm -hmm. um and and for what that film has done is pretty wild and uh and you get to see dennis haskins in a way you have never seen him he's flat out yeah he's scary he's a a real jerk too in the movie too Mm -hmm. he's a scary jerk yeah. You have a film coming out. You have a film coming out featuring Tony Todd. People call him uh uh Candyman. Yeah, Candyman. But when I saw that Vita was in it, I'm like, uh, oh, okay. Is she Tony's girlfriend or is ne- nemesis or what what's what's the deal? I do, all I don't know what... for me and all I can reveal is that I'm the mysterious and alluring Cassandra. But I think there's another film that Harley did with that team, and I'll let him expound on that. Yeah, so uh, so that it's not our film, but I'm I'm, a, I'm an actor in it, and and we are kind of not uh, uh, privileged to say a ton, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's essentially it is like a, a a Marvel universe of characters under an umbrella. It's TV shows, films. <laughs> And and the characters, I mean, uh, Richard Tyson is in that. Uh, uh, Vernon Wells is in it. Uh, uh, T- Tony's in it. Uh, uh, and these guys do some pretty intriguing stuff. Um, you know, they 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 mix and match a lot in the fantasy genres. And uh, and I love their unique way of getting at things. Uh, very artistic and and still intriguing for a general audience I, I i'm really just super curious to see what's going to come out when it's all said and done but it was a, a blast to act so far uh with them and their team uh a lot of fun for sure now are you and also I think Mil novak is also in it as well yeah. right harley and yours yeah. and it's the uh, up-and-comer jimmy drain who's wonderful and it, yeah. i guess all that you can reveal is that it's kind of about the about the dark side right yes yeah i mean i, I think it's a uh, it, it it's it's in the bit of that dungeons and dragons uh uh, uh mm. side of things uh it's a uh, horror and fantasy mm. uh and, but yeah it, it's very very intriguing and all the characters are very colorful let's put it that way there's no regular characters in this <laughs> thing at all now i gotta make sure that we get everything out that our co-hostess wants today because, believe it or not, we only have 15 minutes left. We, we, wow. We've eaten up time like it's like like we have munchies, you know. Yes. So, right. um, well, I I just want to hear more about what Carly and Katie are up to because it seems yeah, like you yeah. guys are doing. It's not just tale of tales. There's there's other things you guys have got cooking. So, I would love to hear more about what you all are Keep doing. Keep the ballistics out for us. We have 15 uh, minutes. Well. Ash and Bone, we just mm-hmm. released the trailer very recently, and the feedback has been insane. Uh, I remember, you know, Joe Williamson ended up getting us an exclusive through Bloody Disgusting to release the trailer, and I was in shock because a couple of days after they released it, it had just pyramided out through like every horror site you can imagine, and we have, you know, 40 minute videos from Brazil talking about what they think it is. And, and, and wow. it's just wild to see the response from this already. We have had uh, super XL festivals reach out to us uh, asking to get the premiere privileges uh, to it already. Big, big festivals that I've ne- never even got into before. Um, mm. and, and now they're emailing me asking if they can screen my film. Yeah, so that film, uh, I think, is going to be probably the first one that we get a, a true theatrical of sort 
Uh, I, I'm about uh, two weeks away from from being done, and this has been a tricky ride because mm -hmm. of how good it is. Uh, I, I've actually had multiple composers work on it. Uh, we we ended up doing more work on uh, on the sound design. So uh, again, more work than I've ever put into post on a project before, and uh, and I think um, I think it's going to be. Uh, a, a, at the very least, a cult horror hit, mm. but uh, but it could end up being a mainstream horror film as well because the story's so good. Uh, uh, a good friend of mine who has been an AD with us in the past, he's a film director himself and a writer. He wrote it, uh, Brett Miller, and he's actually the same guy who wrote Beneath Us All that we'll be shooting in, in May. Uh, right. That Vita is a part of. Yes, yes. I'm so honored to be working with you guys again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, his writing is just incredible. He, I mean, he's truly taking storytelling to another level for us. I've always felt that I was a solid writer. I think I write pretty good dialogue. I think I, I get pretty good characters. But I, I love slow burns myself mm -hmm. that, that ramp up and take off. And I know with today's audience, you need to, to jumpstart things and you need to move things and keep them moving. Uh, and he was able to do that in the writing so very well that you never, uh, you never go, okay, if it doesn't take off and you know, it, 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 that's the risk with the slow burns mm -hmm. and, uh, and Brett's writing is so powerful that it keeps you at the edge of your seat truthfully. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, and that, that makes me excited because that's the, my one thing as a writer I, you know, I, I I love the '90s thrillers. For me, they were the best ever films. So I write like that. I write ensemble and I write character building and 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 and, 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 and storytelling. And uh, so to get his writing that mixes with mine mm -hmm. and gets you the 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 pace of today has been a, a really cool gift. Uh, and I think Ashton Bone is going to be. It's going to be a, a, a big thing for us because of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are you actually doing, it sounds like this only way you could be doing this is you've got two or three different movies you're working on at the same time. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. They're at some, some, <laughs> they're at yeah. some stage. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> just had. Uh, Even that we got a clone. <laughs> we, uh, we had a, a big virtual premiere for uh, a Bennett song holiday which is a family movie and a, and a sequel to our Bennett Song film yeah. that has done really, yeah, really well. Yeah, that released in October. Was it in October? It was, it was late October, yeah. early November. Yeah. So that one is now behind me. Tale of Tales on Tuesday, I'll have the final episode. The only things we're working on now are the different trailers. They want a 30-second trailer, a 60-second trailer, a season trailer. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get to all that. Ash and Bone will be finished a week from that. And then we're in pre-production right now of, of Beneath Us All, which I think the Beneath Us All story is so needed right now because the last time I saw a vampire movie that did anything for me was 30 Days of Night. That was the oh, last yeah. time I was scared of a vampire. That was a trip. And, that was a trip. And, and I'm going to make he sure that people are scared of them again. <laughs> he wants to make people scared of vampires again. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs>